So welcome everybody. I will continue with a, a little bit more technical stuff uh, with the third presentation. So uh, this is what we are facing these days. So you have some physical, some virtual, and if you're lucky, you're moving to a cloud, uh, cloud system. So if you're starting to consolidate your centers, so these are your headaches. So in the physical, you have number of the solution. This is a typical silo problem. The question that comes to your head, how shall I manage my silo? I have a number of the vendors. I have a number of the solution. My guys need to go for the various education, various trainings. So it's, it's almost it's unmanageable uh, to provide the consistent security for such an environment. So uh, of course, it has an impact on your operation and total TCO, uh, total cost of ownership with such a solution. So what we are providing here is to reduce the complexity and to manage uh, the systems that are physical and also that are going to the virtual. With the virtualization, it's really awesome platform. So if you see this, so tell me how much, how many systems you already virtualize in your system in percentage. Let's say, who has more than 50 servers here to manage? More than 50. Okay, nobody, okay, more than 10. <laughs> okay, so what is the first thing you're going to secure in your environment? Network, probably, yeah. No, your job. You need to secure your job. Because if you choose wrong solution for your system, you jeopardize your job, your position. If your position is in the danger, your company is in the danger. Because the continuity is broken. So it's really easy if you fire people and you hire a new one to start somewhere. But where shall you start? And this is the problem. So that's why you need to focus on the right solution to secure your position. During my presentation, I'll give you the idea, what do we do here and how we can help you to secure your position and to secure your company, to secure the running instances, and even more, to secure your data, because this is why you're doing all the stuff. So the integrated security and the single management console to help you to be very efficient. The security in these days is the internet-based uh, systems. So old-fashioned security doesn't scale anymore. So you need to provide a system, or we as a vendor, we need you provide you with a system that is proactive. Reactive security is over, forget it. So we need to be so quick, and even though we have to have a system to protect your system against the unknown threat, the threats that are already coming, and that the problem these days is not only the threat that is coming, it's not all, all, already the technology or only technology, it is also the social engineering. Maybe you know the term APT, Advanced Persistent Threat. It's the vector of the attacks that can basically break into your system and it's not advanced because of using very sophisticated technique, very sophisticated systems. It advanced because it's not working only with the technology layer. It's implement also the social engineering. So if you're going to virtual, that's another platform in your system. You already have a silo and now you're going to virtual. So somebody has to think, you must be crazy. You already have so many stuff, and you're deploying another stuff. So if you do that, the virtualization has a very specific things to answer. So first thing is the resource contention. We have a customers like uh, Tesco and these guys, the supermarkets. They design the virtualization, uh, the systems, for 100 running instances at the beginning. After six months of running, the system, they found out they have a 350 running virtual instances out of the blue. Why? Because it's so easy. How long it takes you to buy a physical server? Average. Seven days. That's amazing. That's really very efficient. Uh, what I know in the bigger companies, it can take up to 30 days to buy a new server. How long it takes in the virtual environment to provision a new virtual instance. If you're lazy, one hour. If you're good, 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, 
You deploy the system, you run your attack, and you take it away. Done, case closed, nobody will see anything. Then second is instant on gaps. What does it mean? So due to the flexibility of the virtualization, so you can revert your system to a certain point of the time in the history. So because something doesn't work, you just take a snapshot. If it's safe, you configure it. This is the time it was running safe. Okay, but the problem is none of your administrator will check if the system is consistent. If it's the same security level, level as other systems who are in your production environment. So this is the second problem. Inter VMware attacks or blind spot. Uh, we were doing the proof of concept with the VMware guys uh, for the inter VM attacks, and unfortunately we were successful. So if you don't secure properly your systems, and you just say, I have my perimeter, my data center is behind my perimeter, I'm safe, I don't need to do that. Uh, yeah, to a certain extent you're right, but the problem is, it's the perimeterization of your perimeter. So it means your mobile guys are traveling outside and coming in, and they can introduce the threat behind your perimeter. If some trouble will appear here, all your system, not just one server, the, it can bring down the all physical server, so it can create denial of a service attack on your own system, such an instance. So basically, you bring down all infrastructure. In a physical world, maybe one server will die, and you're safe. In this world, everything dies. You can't provide the services. So there is a blind spot. You don't really know what is running inside of your virtualization. You don't know the content. You don't know the malicious code. You can probably isolate the, the systems, but you know nothing what is running in these isolated instances. And then we are coming to management complexity. So you have a physical, you have the virtual, and you're going to cloud, or you're thinking to going to cloud. The, how shall you manage such instances? So the system, not only that it helps you to manage, reduce the operation, it must provide you with automated features so you set up certain behavior, and let's say if the new VMware image is introduced in your system, the system must automatically assign the protection agent to such a system and to protect it. So assign based on the certain criteria, let's say it's some platform, it's Linux or it's Windows or whatever. So uh, all these kind of the stuff must happen, sorry. Uh, the, another problem is uh, the resource, it has, it has what to do with the resources, so, and uh, sleeping images. So the, you're scanning the environment regularly. So what I see these, the, these days with my customers, they do run scan in the virtual environment, but the minimal impact on the virtual instance, instance in total has an impact on your physical system. So it brings down the performance of the system. Unfortunately, any security layer, I don't know a single vendor who will tell you by installing our protection or deploying our protection, your systems are gonna be faster. That would be awesome. So putting there, we will make it faster. Unfortunately, no. We make it slower, but it's, it's like a how slow it can be or so slow that it shouldn't jeopardize overall running of your, of your services, what you provide. As a result of this action, what I see with my customers, they switch off the security. They don't use it. So it's not uh, the way it should happen. The second is the sleeping images or the dormant images in your environment. If the sleeping image is coming up back to operation, what will happen? So the consistency or the, the level of security is different than the active images. So the solution must be able to provide the protection even for those images who are coming from the like a sleeping state. Okay, so now we are digging deeper. So what I describe, it's illusion that a single technology can protect you. No way. So that's why we apply the onion approach. So it means we have a multiple layer of the filters or the super agent or the agents in the environment to help you to protect. And even more, these agents talk together. They know they are here or they know they're on the physical. Why they need to know? Because this is how they behave 
to the overall system resources. So this is the first thing. And I said something about the proactive security. How do we provide the proactive security? Deep packet inspection is made of the sub-modules. One of the most important modules is IDS IPS. This module is actually provide you with a virtual patching and can protect your systems if the vendor you're using is unable to deliver the patch or if simply you can't open the operation window to patch. I'm not telling don't patch your system. No, patch is very important. But we are buying you a time you can test and you can still be protected. So this is the virtual patching provided by these submodules, and additional modules are extending the protection. So the further uh, two modules, integrity monitoring and log inspections, are modules that are basically for the forensic analysis or compliance reasons in the system. So the antivirus, anti anti malware, or antivirus, if you want to firewall deep packet. Each module can be deployed individually. So you don't need to deploy all of them. Let's say you're using the Windows, you're using the GPO, group policy objects, for managing the firewalls on the Windows, then you don't need a firewall. Okay, Trend Micro, I don't need a firewall. What shall you do? So you don't purchase that license. That's it. And it's not going to work. So, but you need a virtual patching, so you need to purchase the deep packet inspection. Even more, something is based on the agent and something is based on the virtual appliance. And I will talk about this later. And the later is now. So the virtual appliance, how does it work? We have a basically two versions of the virtual appliance. One is called uh, 7.5 and this one is 8. 7.5 virtual appliance has a, a, we call it IDF, Intrusion Defense Firewall, so the firewall IPS module or deep packet inspection module that look into the content and analyze for the malicious code or malicious communication and blocks that. So this can be agentless. Uh, it integrates with the uh, hypervisor, and on the hypervisor, it analyzes in and outgoing traffic, also inter-VM attack, inter-VM uh, traffic. Then we have an antivirus module. Uh, to pro protect against the malicious code that integrates with the vShield and the vSphere. So the new Deep Security 8 virtual appliance, we extended agentless protection of the integrity monitoring that you can have, and then we have ba uh, agent-based log inspections. All these modules are also provided on the agent level. So you can really choose the granular settings. With the anti-malware, with the agent-based protection, we can protect the Microsoft or the Linux platform. Uh, the Linux guys can tell it doesn't scale. The Linux don't really is target of the virus or the mail code. It is true and not true. The Linux platform is used to spread the infection. So if over the Samba protocol you're sharing some resources, sharing some files, this is how the infection can spread within your environment. Even more, those who are going to VDI, the benefit of virtual desktop infrastructure is to have a total control on the environment, better, protect, better protection, better manageability, and extending the life cycle of the hardware. So also, the other system can protect also the VDI environment if you need to do that. Furthermore, with the agent, uh, the questions from my customers, hey, guys, but I don't have only the VMware. I also have a Hyper-V. I have also Xen. So how shall you help me to protect that? The agent can run in that environment and protect also the running instance, virtual instance, either in Hyper-V or the Citrix-based uh, virtualization platform. So you can deploy that and manage it from one console. This is the architecture of the solution. So the central point is a deep security manager that helps you to protect, that is uh, providing you reporting, uh, workflow, keeping the workflow within the environment. It has a granular configuration tools, so each user can configure the system so what he is doing. So not that he can see, he see everything, really to assign just the roles that he can see. Uh, it can predefined or pre-configured be providing the security profiles with a deep security manager that you can deploy either on the, on the agent level or on the virtual appliance level. 
So you can be really quickly protected. Uh, so uh, Deep Security Manager uh, utilize uh, database engine SQL or the Oracle database engines. You can choose which one you like so, and to hook the Deep Security Manager to these databases. So the, then the agent, to deploy the agent and deploy the virtual uh, appliance from the Deep Security Manager also to integrate with the vCloud. And the very new thing is to check the integrity of the running instances in your cloud via the Deep Security Manager. So even more, this is, this is all beautiful, but you need to correlate. You really need to understand if the attack that is happening somewhere on the internet or is happening inside of your network is where it comes from. So we are using a threat intelligence manager. You can hook the deep security manager into, into the threat intelligence manager and help you to understand the vector of the attack inside of your environment. This is all beautiful, but you still need to protect the data. This is why we are here. This is why companies are paying us to protect the data. So we were talking about the protecting the virtual instance. Now, how shall you help me, Trend Micro, to protect my data? So, uh, of course, we recognize several stages of the data. The data addressed, data in motion, and data in use. So data addressed, we are protecting by encryption, are encrypted. Data in motion, as they are transferred for processing, are also encrypted on the way. As they reach the virtual instance, that application that is using the data, then it gets decrypted. So this is how it works. We provide the two um, options or the modes. So it can be SAAS, software as a service, or you can have the console on your side as a virtual appliance, or integrate with a third party uh, and provide the keys for your systems. So it works so that you configure the system that is doing the integrity check, the agent sitting here is doing the in integrity check based on the policy designed by the administrator and assigning the decryption key to the virtual instance to resolve and uh, decrypt the data. Uh, why cloud services are not so popular or why it's so slow, why the business is not more aggressive? The case is very simple because you don't give up the responsibility. If you're moving to a cloud, you're still responsible for your data. So it's not the provider. So in the contract, if you read it carefully, we don't care about the security. It's your business, Mr. Customer. You need to set it up. That is very logical because the, your service provider can't tell if the traffic going through here is a useful traffic or is a possible attack. They, they don't have a competency to say that. So uh, this is the problem if you're leaving if you divorce, you know this, some of you, some of you know. Oh, sorry for this, but if you divorce, it's difficult. What is mine? What is your? How shall I make sure? So if you divorce with your service provider, how can you make sure the data are being damaged? Data are not being abused by the privileged users. So what you do here, you just damage the decryption keys or encryption keys. And you prove to your auditor these keys has been damaged, full stop. The data cannot be retrieved. So this is how you can basically secure your data in the cloud-like environment. So this is the offering, the, the, either the console in the cloud or the appliance on your site. So here it provision the agents and the agents integrate with these systems and deploy uh, all mounted devices to the running instance for further uh, protection. So if you're doing the integrity check of the system, in the integrity, you're asking the question, is this the IP that I last time seen my instance? Is my instance in the data center that is in the EU? Or is it outside of the EU? Is it 8 AM to 5 AM? Uh, because if the guys go uh, in your work to sleep, and somebody is trying to access the data at 3 a.m. Uh, at 3 a.m. in the morning, so it doesn't scale. So that the, such a such a access to the system should not be allowed because there is nobody who is working at 3 a.m. in my company. So even though the attacker could successfully compromise the station because you didn't put the protection there, but he couldn't compromise the data, and this is what you care about. 
if uh, there is a case to protect the, uh, the station, then you need to deploy uh, the agent, deep security agent, so you can protect the data in use by the deep security agent on the running instance. If the policy is okay, it provis provision the key and you're cooking with a gas. So you can work, you can be safe, you can prove to your audit that this is what, you, what you're doing. Even more, uh, use it as a software, as a service. If you're a provider, it makes sense for you because we are third party. It doesn't make sense that the provider would keep the key management inside of the house because he can abuse that and you don't even know that. So it makes sense that we as a third party are doing that. So we have a multiple layer of technologies protecting our cloud uh, to protect the key management inside of the cloud. We are not managing the data. We are managing just the keys for you. Of course, you can, as a super administrator, you can download the keys to your premise and to have them somewhere in the, in the safe place. Okay, the benefits of the deep security. I hope it makes sense what I said. So this coordinated approach makes sense. So you need to protect what is running, what is live. You need to be ready to protect what is coming from the sleeping state to a live system. So uh, also uh, you need to have the system that doesn't overload your uh, system so that you can't provide the services for your, for your people. And uh, another thing is what I mentioned a little bit is the compliance. Maybe compliance is not such a pain here, but later on it's going to be more and more. The EU, NISA, all these regulations will push you to, to declare the compliance. If you're working for the super companies, uh, multinational companies, the compliance is a kind of the headache. It's a constant process, instant process. It never stops. You need to prove that you're, you're there. And of course, uh, reduce the operation cost. So uh, if you're coming to a customer, they're asking me, so if I deploy the security, doesn't mean I need to hire the super specialist, doesn't mean I need to hire more people. I'd love to say, yes, please, hire people, give work to people, but you don't have to. Because the system, the intelligence, we are providing you the intelligence, we are helping you to understand what is the attack and what to do to protect against such an attack. So it's, the intelligence is integrated in the product. So I hope there is a time for questions. So please, if you may have any questions, just this is your time.